Hi, everybody. We're back. This is Dave Vellante from Wikibon.org, and this is SiliconAngle.tv's continuous coverage of Sapphire Now. We're here in Orlando, where we are bringing you wall-to-wall coverage of Sapphire. We heard uh, Bill McDermott uh, this morning. I'm uh, sorry, uh, yesterday we heard uh, Jim Hagemann Snabe this morning, and uh, we heard from the CEO of Success Factors. Um, great messaging, very elegant uh, communications, great graphics, and uh, and a lot of talk about simplicity and cloud and mobility. We're going to get into that. We've got two great guests, uh, both Cube alum, uh, uh, Prasad Rampali from EMC. Welcome back, Prasad. Good to see you again. Prasad is, runs the solutions business at EMC, and Parag Patel of uh, VMware, who runs Global Strategic Alliances. Parag, good to see you. Good to be back. So we're here in Orlando at, at Sapphire. I mean, great vibe. Than the technology shows that we used to at the EMC world, or even you know VMware. Absolutely, you know, very business focused and, and a lot of C-level executives, and, and you know, great vibe, isn't it? It's great. Well, it's, it's very much a business show. They really go after the business audience, they line of business that they sell to, and the fun thing is they have such great stories to tell. So this morning, they had McLaren, the racing people, on stage. It was all about race cars and new fiber materials, but underneath it was the SAP story. So they do a very good job of packaging um, the business story around everything. Yeah, there's nothing cooler than race cars. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, Prasad, you know, when you think of SAP, you, you know, you generally think of complex, it takes a long time, it's expensive, it's inflexible, I mean, those are the, but it's really robust, and, and you know, if you want to do global supply chain, that's the gold standard. But what you're hearing this week is cloud, mobility, simplicity, personalization, iPads, it's a different message than I'm used to. SAP. What do you make of that? No, it's, it's a fundamental transformation that SAP is actually doing a very good job of. And, and they've done a, an excellent job integrating their core uh, NetViewer SAP foundation, which runs uh, traditional ERP, now with this transformative agents on this HANA in-memory computing engine, and then front-ending it with personalization with uh, Sybase and, and those products. So uh, really looking at where the market is going, which is all about the consumer, personalized uh, and enabling real-time information, real-time insight uh, with the back end of uh, their core business process intelligence that has been their stay and their foundation. So uh, I think it's a fantastic story. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean both, both EMC and VMware, we talk about cloud, uh, and certainly you've, you've both got angles on the public cloud, but a lot of your customers are putting their, their private clouds. Mm-hmm. They're, mm-hmm. they're essentially building services, you know, IT as a service, but what I would often say compete with cloud service providers, you know, um, in a sense, when I say compete, it's in quotes, right? IT organizations need to be more agile, simpler, mm-hmm. more faster, more responsive, and that's what sort of VMware and EMC and everything are talking about a lot. I mean, we've heard a lot about public cloud today. It seems like a, a, a big leap, I mean, it seems like a lot of vision in there. Can, can, can you, maybe, Craig, we can start, start with you. Talk about what your customers are doing, you know, what you're seeing in SAP. Specifically, because mm-hmm. I feel like it's a lot of private cloud activity going on, yeah. um, and and I'm just sort of looking for confirmation of that or denial. Yeah. Talk about that. Well, when you sit down with customers, they have a huge installation of SAP on premise, and the first task for all the CIOs is to get that installation as agile and cost effective as possible. So when we talk to the SAP owners at the enterprise accounts, job number one for them is to turn the internal SAP deployment into an SAP cloud, a private cloud. Now, they'll sometimes go to a public cloud uh, if they need extra capacity, right, or they want to have a sandbox instance. Um, I think a lot of the public cloud you're hearing today at the show is really around success factor and the on-demand and SAP needing to respond to people like Salesforce. But when we look at the cloud itself and the build-out of the cloud underneath SAP, most of the action is in the private area. Yeah, so so applications that are relatively narrow, like like uh, uh, Salesforce Automation or HR, in mm-hmm. the success factor. Okay, now, Prasad, uh, I want to ask you about HANA, because, I mean, you can't listen to a talk without <laughs> hearing about HANA, and people are, are clearly excited about it. Um, you know, the, C, the, the chief executive chairman of McLaren said, uh, we're blown away by HANA and its potential for productivity. And uh, uh, I think that portends a, an interesting future. Um, talk about HANA, what you're doing with HANA integration, what it means to yeah, as you know, we've got a, a MOU that we've uh, written with SAP and VMware, right? And, and, and the core of that MOU is really founded on two key value props. 
One is a total simplification of management uh, on their landscape virtualization manager, uh, virtualizing and integrating with uh, VM-based technology running on our storage. Uh, and the other is HANA. Uh, and when you uh, unpeel the onion of HANA in terms of how it's going to be deployed in large mission-critical enterprise environments, uh, and I used to run IT for a living, so uh, their primary requirements are not just about uh, you know, lightning speed, it's also about persistence of data, it's about disaster recovery, it's about high availability, it's about backup and archiving. And so these care abouts of the CIO have to be supported on, on a, a very robust uh, EMC-like foundation that's served well over the past 30 years, which I believe will still be relevant to HANA. And so uh, applying flash technologies that HANA will harness uh, for running in memory uh, and then also partitioning to, to slower memory or flash and then tying to inline storage is going to be the architecture, as far as I can tell, for the next decade. Well, so I want to follow up on that. And we talked a little bit about this off camera, but so uh, Shnabe made the statement today, imagine running uh, your applications with everything in memory uh, and no traditional disk-based database. Now, that was sort of a backhanded oracle, <laughs> and the is very good. You know, they don't really <laughs> attack the competition. They're, they're right. pretty, pretty classy. But as EMC, you know, you got to be looking at that saying, okay, the, the world is changing. So how are you changing to, you know, embrace that? We're absolutely looking at where uh, data is going to be computed going forward, and we believe there's three tiers of data, right? Uh, the first is uh, data essentially being read in memory and then computed as such, uh, co-located with the, the processor, the x86 processor architecture. And memory uh, set sizes uh, with the Intel roadmap are growing, and so uh, you could absolutely make the case that for a large portion of the applications, that data could be read in memory and compute happens right there. Uh, but as you look at the broader uh, set of uh, applications that deal with big data and so on, uh, increasingly, there's going to be a need for flash that's co-located next to memory. So you can essentially have data that's read in memory or read on flash and implemented into a compute model going forward. So with technologies like Lightning or VF Cache that we've announced, as you know, uh, we're going to integrate. Extreme IO. Uh, <laughs> or Extreme IO. Or uh, Extreme We're going to have application awareness of flash besides memory uh, that essentially is going to be So, so Fred, things are changing at the application level. Now, the big thrust of VMware and, and Maritz and Todd Nielsen talk about this all the time are, are, is the developer community. Um, and they're looking at taking advantage of these new I.O. architectures. What are you seeing in the developer community? Maybe give us an update on what's going on with the application level. transformation happening in the way young developers are building new apps, whether it's uh, mobile applications, whether it's big data applications, whether it's analytics, whatever it is, uh, consumer apps, you know, the way things like Zynga and Facebook are put together. We want to make sure that we can enable that generation of developers to build on our platform. And what we're trying to do is be the operating system in between that marries all this innovation at the apps layer with the improvements and efficiencies at the uh, infrastructure. So fundamentally, again, it goes back to those two layers, which is we want to make sure that our platform can accommodate the increasing volumes and diversity of data that's coming out. And secondly, what's happening with big data, and it's a very big term, right? It means a lot of things to a lot of people. But fundamentally, it means that a lot of apps are going to be much more data intensive than before, and you're going to have a whole new generation of analytics apps that you didn't have before. You can do an analytics on all kinds of things you never dreamed of before. 
We're seeing it done with weather data and personal data and email data, all kinds of crazy stuff. And so what we're trying to do is make sure that our applications platforms, so Cloud Foundry, for example, are giving developers data services to build these next generation data intensive apps. So the acquisition we made is in that vein. So how do you guys work together? Can I describe that a little bit? I mean, you're, you're sort of yeah, sure. partners. Uh, the answer is uh, very well. <laughs> yeah. so, so talk about the dynamics of that relationship, if you will. Well, uh, I'm sure Parag will, will add to this, but uh, we, we have a, a number of uh, threads that we work across. So when you start with the product space, uh, we have roughly about 75 different integration threads that tie our core EMC products with vSphere, uh, you know, VCD, VCOps, the entire VMware stack. And uh, we'll continue to innovate uh, in more dimensions than uh, the 75 that are already underway uh, or have been completed. Uh, but the netting of it is, um, when we look at uh, how orchestration or management will be done in enterprise, uh, we want to be an integral part of uh, how vSphere looks at it, uh, and uh, we want to be seamless to the end customer, and tie into uh, this LVM project that I talked about. From the application all the way down to the core storage, uh, it has to be a seamless experience for the data, the data center administrator. Do some of those integration points actually get down into the kernel, or do you guys like say, no way, that's we going to put a brick wall around that? Or is uh, it well, we don't, there's, I don't think we do anything that integrates at the kernel level, unless it's with a, a microprocessor. Uh -huh. um, but this, we, we've done a lot in the last few years to open up our source code to partners so they can write integrations on their end in a much more intelligent way. And then we've opened up a lot of APIs. Yeah, like the storage APIs. And security the, APIs. Backup network security, security and management. Mm -hmm, uh, absolutely. Okay, so so that, you, I think, you know, it's clear, in the last couple of years, VMware's wor worked really hard to mm -hmm. open those APIs up. Um, are we seeing the impact in the marketplace now? Are customers actually con consuming this stuff? Or are we still sort of in the development stages in the ecosystem? Where are we? No, a lot of it is out. You know, I think the most mature area is in the management space. Mm -hmm. So our management APIs from vCenter have been out for over a decade now. And you see an enormous number of third-party plugins into our management suite. You see a lot of integrations where our third-party management tool can access information from our platform and, and do all kinds of management stuff on it. I think, you know, after that, the storage APIs are getting quickly mature, so there's a lot of storage products out there. Uh, so in fact, a full product line from EMC that have taken advantage of all those integrations, and you're seeing a lot more uh, orchestration and efficiency between the VMware layer and the storage layer. Uh, you know, we've come out with security APIs in the last 18 months, and you're seeing a lot of endpoint security, antivirus security vendors use those APIs to provide a, a deeper, more secure experience for the cloud. So it's, we're, I would say we're in the middle innings of that. So I'll talk a little bit about mobile. Um, you know, you think of EMC, you don't necessarily think about mobile. <laughs> you know, mobile enterprise company. Yeah, yeah that's the endpoint point yeah, yeah. Right, but, right. But it's cl you're clearly going to be watching all this, saying, okay, applications are changing, um, the endpoints are changing, security models are changing. Talk about mobile, what it means to you, and, and maybe you can get uh, Frog's input as well. Yeah, really two, two thoughts come to mind. One is, uh, and, and I was joking, really, uh, the, the, the mobile environment is driving a ton of video traffic uh, mm -hmm. in the data center. And so uh, as we look at uh, this mobile phenomena, there's two areas that we're very focused on. One is obviously security. Uh, we have the RSA division that uh, is very intimately tied to establishing uh, this notion of cloud trust. And this is the end-to-end -end trust model that uh, we're looking at with uh, uh, a cloud trust broker model that could essentially authenticate at the same time establish credentialing. An appropriate level of privileges that a uh, device, which is essentially a resource in the cloud, uh, could have to be then uh, established as bona fide in the way it uh, you know, uh, attaches to the back end data center and uh, uh, the application and the data that come with it. So, uh, so we have a very significant focus on how do we enable that whole end-to-end -end trust with uh, endpoint devices, and, and clearly the mobile device is going to be the predominant device. And applications like uh, the mobile wallet concept, where uh, increasingly you know, we won't have credit cards, and how do we enable that level of security uh, touches us on the back end, and uh, we are uh, extensively engaged with uh, a lot of companies to innovate in that space. The second is this, this deluge of video data, uh, thanks to the iPhone and uh, you know, uh, photos being ubiquitous. Uh, we are looking at how we can essentially have a scale-out architecture on the back end uh, that leverages all this media. Uh, and uh, clearly, Isilon is our flagship product there. Uh, and uh, we have a significant uh, ongoing uh, innovation on a, a, a robust file system that can scale across, uh, uh, you know, uh, thousands of nodes uh, to essentially get to the economies of scale that uh, the mobile, you know, 
and Marvin is going to drive. Uh, okay, so so that's great. The, the back end, you know, it's got to be there. It's, it's got to be secure. Yeah. It's got to be reliable. So yeah, more data is what yeah. really. <laughs> where it's, uh, and so now, Parag, for you guys, mobile is more of a direct play. Mm -hmm. um, you know, your whole BDI business has evolved into accommodating mobile. Sure. It's really transformed in the sure. last couple of years, hasn't it? Yeah, Talk absolutely. About that so that's what you know. The, the endpoint VDI, what used to be called VDI, is one of our three product lines. So it's a major, major growth driver for the company. You know, our, our vision is that we're in many ways the enabler of computing, right, at the software layer. And computing is moving to a myriad of devices. And we need to be the platform that enables those devices. So what we've done is we've evolved our platform so that whether you're using the old traditional desktop or a laptop or a smartphone or a tablet, we can allow you to uh, have the ex same experience across all those devices. We allow you to move your data and your applications across all those devices. You can even use different devices throughout the day, and y yet your personal desktop, and I desktop is kind of becoming obsolete, but your set of applications and data and interface and look and feel would follow you no matter what device you're on. And so we're doing a lot of stuff at the platform layer, at the end user security layer, at the end user um, application access layer uh, to make sure that the end user can control their apps and their data no matter what devices they're using. And you stop at the at the app development. Is that right? That's or right. I mean, I mean you, you, you know, Zimbra, I mean, but you see so plan in apps, but what's the... What's We've the dabbled in apps, yeah. uh, but we're really at this le level focusing on the app platform, the core cloud platform, and then the end users. Right. Uh, Prasad, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, you've, you've been in, in, a, in, a, in, in a buyer organization, in a consumer organization, so you've had to do a lot of this integration, and now you're in a position to, to really take that experience and solve a lot of the problems that you had to solve as, a, as an end user, but to try to eliminate right. some of those mundane tasks. Uh, that's going to be kind of a gratifying situation for you. Um, but at the same time, a big challenge. You have all these piece parts. You mentioned RSA. You've got VMware. You've got, you know... You know, you partner with Cisco, you partner with other communications vendors. So you got this sort of collection of technologies that you have to bring together. So talk about your objectives in terms of your organization and what your vision is in terms of where you want to take it. Yeah, the, the vision for us as a solutions entity at EMC is, is really simple. Uh, number one, we want to have a very fast time to market for our core products. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the front end of our core products is really a solution view that the customer cares about. Uh, uh, you can argue that uh, the customer is really looking at the use case versus buying the core component. And, and so whether it's uh, uh, onboarding or bursting of data or whether it's a VDI, uh, in all those use cases, the application is the front face that the customer cares about. And then our infrastructure and how it's packaged as part of the application for delivering the experience, whether it's quality of service or security or management, just comes along with it. So my job is really to make sure that that integration with third-party ISVs and uh, VMware and, and others is done in such a way that we deliver to that value proposition and there, there will, therefore uh, enable a lightning speed uh, adoption curve for our products. That's one, right? Uh, the second really is differentiation. Uh, it's not just about packaging. It's about in the way it's packaged, we create additional value that the customer is going to pay more for. And so when you look at VDI as an example, working with uh, uh, Prague's team with uh, View 5.1, for example, we are enabling a, a set of incremental features that uh, do uh, storage cloning, uh, which drive much sig more significant reduction in TCO for the backend infrastructure uh, across a number of users that can go up to 5,000 to 10,000 without just adding storage. And, and that amounts to something for how a CIO looks at building out a VDI farm. Right. Uh, right. So. Okay. Well, let's bring it back to, to SAP. Mm -hmm. We're here, so <laughs> <we're> closing. <laughs> uh, Not forget yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, so I, s I sort of started this conversation with, you know, the view of SAP is is complex and cumbersome and, and yet very valuable. I mean, clearly, you look at the executives here; they're getting value out of SAP. But things are changing. You know, you guys are driving as technology companies a lot of that change, kind of cloud, big data, virtualization. When we when you look at SAP and uh, the types of applications that these customers are running, look out, you know, three to five years. What, what do you think this whole environment is going to look like? Well, I think you, you'll still have a fair amount of legacy apps, right, from from um, written from years ago, and but they will be running on a much more agile, cloud-like platform. So 
that you'll feel and behave uh, as cloud-like apps. Then I think you'll see uh, these companies like SAP making huge changes at the interface level. So because the consumer has, has you know, in some ways the forest has left the stable. The consumer wants a attractive, elegant interface, and they won't compromise. And so I think you'll see the SAP interface improving in that direction. I think you'll see things available on mobile devices. I think this is, you know, SAP realizing and responding to what the end user wants. And I think you'll see, you'll see that evolving in the next few years. So my my follow-up uh, on, on that uh, answer, Prasad, is, you know, everybody talks about the 70-30 mix, 70% of the IT investment is spent on maintenance and yeah. running the business, and only 30% is spent on, on growing the business and innovation. Uh, virtually every C CEO I know talks about that. Your two CEOs talk mm -hmm. about it all the time. As a, as, as a former you know, IT professional, I think you understand you know, the challenges. We live in a labor-intensive economy. There's all these hardened processes built up. It's very hard to change. Do you think what Prasad just talked about, that vision he put forth of all the legacy apps, um, do you think that we'll be able to move the needle on that 730 you know, from a practitioner's point of view? Um, I believe so, right? And, and having been in IT for 15 years, uh, you'd expect me to be a skeptic. Uh, uh, so I, I do have that dose of skepticism that this is going to change overnight. Uh, but I, I truly believe, uh, and as Joe puts it, uh, we are at an inflection point um, from uh, the PC computing era to the cloud era. And we are well past the hype curve, the Gartner hype curve, due to deployment, right? And so we believe that um, as the adoption of cloud becomes more ubiquitous, uh, the uh, implementation model of how quickly you can provision applications, how quickly you can uh, adopt uh, new applications in the way they are built uh, is going to be much faster, at least three to four times faster from the time I used to run IT. Uh, so I'm, I'm very optimistic that uh, this whole model of the SAP landscape, which is was extremely complex, moving to a much more simplified model, a fully virtualized um, with a user interface that is uh, integrated with social and so on, is, is, is going to happen in the next five years. I, um I was struck by Lars, and I don't know if you were able to see the success factor and CEO of Lars mm -hmm. talked about um, yeah, so some of their innovation. He had the chart that showed the percentage of revenue that came from new products versus old products. And it was just a staggering amount, I mean, 85% of it came from new products. I think in order to achieve that 70-30, that maybe get to 50-50 or to flip it, that IT has to be able to deliver innovation in a similar fashion. Now, that's different from building products, isn't it? Mm -hmm. but, but you guys are both putting forth a, a, a vision where the potential is there. Um, two questions. Have, have you done that, or are you beginning to do that internally in your own organization, mm -hmm. VMware and EMC, and are you seeing customers actually start to move that way? Yes, yeah, so internally we are heavily virtualized. And um, in fact, I'd say almost all of our SAs are virtualized. Or else. Or else. <laughs> and then we've now moved on to uh, a lot of SaaS applications. Uh, we're doing some rapid prototyping on Cloud Foundry for internal usage. And then in customers, I mean, absolutely, everybody's moving quickly to cloud-like environments. I mean, I think our growth is a testament to that, right? That our growth in customers, our growth in bookings and sales. Um, and once customers, you know, it's, once they get 50, 70% virtualized, there's no going back. They realize the value, they realize the automation. Um, and it, they are actually investing more and more in these new apps, doing new things on the innovation side, because they have to. And you seeing the same thing inside your organization? Uh, uh, absolutely. I mean, looking at EMC IT, uh, we are frankly deploying the, the largest SAP transformation project there is on the planet today. It's called Propel. And it's, it's going to be Propel. Propel. Yeah, Propelling the company. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's fully virtualized. Can you talk about that a little bit? Or uh, like yeah, to a certain extent. Or yeah, tell us about Propel. Yeah, Propel is essentially a grounds up uh, implementation of uh, a brand new ERP system running on uh, SAP. Uh, but but the conception is not just traditional ERP. It's an end-to-end -end implementation of uh, SAP as a core platform uh, that's going to uh, enable the core transaction environment, enable the analytics environment, and on top of that, create a personal user interface for uh, all the employees in the company and extend to the B2B model to suppliers and partners as well. So uh, it's a very extensive implementation. Uh, it's a full change in, uh, in the <coughs> data model of the company. Um, it's a, a standardization of core product definitions and in, in how you run an ERP environment, what is the definition of the customer, what is the definition of our product, uh, how we actually book, a, book the order, create backlog, how you ship it. So it's a, a fundamental redefinition and a, a change in our business process to much higher efficiencies 
at the same time enabling, enabling single, single versions of truth of our core master data on an SAP infrastructure that is going to be fully virtualized with real-time analytics on the back end. So, so uh, obviously uh, HANA, uh, HANA's involved, right? Uh, HANA is on the roadmap. Uh, okay. We are taking this at uh, a phase at a time. Yeah. So in our first implementation, we just want to get the core transaction environment down. Right. Uh, and then we're going to extend that to our backend environment, and HANA is clearly part of our roadmap. Yes. And you, how much do you get involved? Does your organization get involved in, in sort of helping construct that solution? So we, we have a symbiotic relationship with IT, where uh, even with uh, VMware IT, where uh, we have this playback and, and, and feed forward model where uh, if you look at uh, EMC IT, they have a pretty significantly elegant uh, a middleware capability that they've developed. Uh, they, they have uh, uh, le they have leveraged uh, you know uh, technologies from VMware on uh, SQL Fire, Gemfire, which is their real-time in-memory implementation of data, uh, and uh, we are looking at that and tying that back to can we enable uh, migration of data as a, a solution that can be offered with uh, how you move to a VMAX and so on. Uh, so it's it's a it's a, a very uh, close partnership. So that you're we a have. resource for. The IT group is that correct, or, or the other way around? It, it actually it's actually a do loop yeah, where okay. we come up with certain solutions that IT says, hey, we could be first adopters for, and we're looking at Hana as, as a good model for that, where we are leading this whole Hana appliance certification with SAP. Mm -hmm. At the same time, uh, we're looking at our EMC IT shop to deploy the first set of use cases for Hana in EMC IT. Uh, conversely, they have come up with some. Uh, pretty uh, innovative concepts on how to do a data staging very rapidly from a core SAP environment to an analytics environment, uh, leveraging VMware's technology on SQL Fire, Gemfire, and we are taking that and saying, okay, we want to standardize this as a core offering in the way we go to market. A major investment in SAP. I, I always love to have been like a fly in the wall in the meeting between Tucci and McDermott when, <laughs> you know, the discussion goes down. And, uh, no, we are very excited. You, know, you, don't, you don't make a decision like that lightly. And you better have the CEOs looking at each other. In the yeah. and, and you should talk to Sanjay, our CIO. He's uh, probably going to give you a lot more insight than I have. But uh, it's, it's a, we're very proud of it. It's a big bet. And, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, we've had Sanjay in the cube. We've had Tony Pags on the cube as well, two right. you know, folks from EMC IT and uh, a pretty innovative you know, uh, organization. And uh, we have, we've had uh, uh, Mark Egan on as mm -hmm. well. So, mm -hmm. uh, so it's great that you guys make um, your IT executives accessible. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's good. It's not only good marketing, but they are at the leading edge of some of the you know, practitioner activities. Yeah, eat your own dog food, right? So any solutions that we come up with, we want to make sure IT is our first and best customer. Yeah, well, um, you know, we used that term uh, last year with Oliver Bushman, who's the CIO of uh, SAP. And he said, well, we're SAP. We prefer to drink our own we champagne. champagne. So, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, that's, 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 that's a better way of saying it. So, yeah, that's good. <laughs> All right, Par Parag Patel and Prasad Rampali, thanks very much for spending some time with us yeah. on theCUBE here at yeah, Sapphire. Always and, a pleasure. Uh, good luck with, uh, with everything. We'll see you guys. We're going to be at uh, EMC World uh, uh, next week. We, we, I presume you'll be there, uh, Prasad. Uh, very much so, yes. Yeah, and yeah I'll be there well? too, yeah. Okay, good. Well, we'll have theCUBE there. We'll be in the Bloggers Lounge, and, uh, and I'm sure we'll be at uh, VMworld as well. Yeah. Back in San Francisco this year. I'm That's very right. happy about that because <laughs> I've spent way too much time at shows in Vegas. That's yeah. right. So I was I was happy when Rick Jackson said we'll be back in San Francisco in the Moscow. And then in Barcelona in October. Yeah, well, I'm not sure we're going to make that trip, All but right. uh, maybe we will. <laughs> so uh, we, 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 we were in Barcelona last fall, but not at, at uh, uh, VMworld, so uh -huh. maybe this year. That's going to be this year. So thank you, gentlemen, and All right, uh, thanks everybody for watching, and uh, we'll be right back after this word from our sponsor.